So how many times have you been wondering how to create this laptop screen with the animated texture on it in Cinema 4D? Is there an easy way? Yes, there is. For this particular animation, I will be using this setup which I did in another tutorial and link is in the description and this particular video is for a Facebook page cover video. So this animation will be used for that and these, uh, these rectangles are set up here in such a way that I can see which part will be visible on the mobile and which part will be visible on the desktop which is, uh, this is these parts are gonna be cut out on the mobile version for the Facebook cover video. For the laptop itself I will press shift F and there's gonna be this whole library of things uh, that Cinema 4D comes with and if you write laptop in here you will find this laptop you can just double click this and it will appear in front of your screen I will change the size of this uh, scale of this laptop like uh, six or yeah six times probably and I'm gonna just uh, just adjust it so I can uh, adjust it the way I want it to stand and what's very nice about this particular laptop is that it comes with it's set up in such a way that you can easily animate the lid of it and there's even if you if you double click this uh, uh, selection uh, it turns out that this is the selection of the screen and it's very easy for you to apply materials to it so for the screen texture all I have to do is create a new standard material I will go inside I will disable these two guys and I will enable this luminance channel and if I click browse uh, I can locate my video that I want to be on the screen which is in this case this is a, um, a footage footage of me browsing uh, pictures of slots on the internet and now I just need to again double click this and drag this texture on and as you can see, it's already working. If I play the animation, you can see that the texture is animating in the laptop screen. And if you want to see this texture in higher resolution in your viewport, you all you have to do is go in here and change this to something higher, like, like 16 megabytes. And now uh, you can, if I zoom in to this texture, I can see that it's, it's sharper. So next I'm just gonna add some sky uh, some redshift sky. I'm gonna go in the sky. Uh, let me just open this redshift IPR so I can see what's going on. And now, if I change this horizon height to something like minus three, it's gonna. I won't be able to see this horizon. And what else? Yeah, I want to change this to this. I don't know what exactly is this, but it changes it changes the colors. And uh, I like these colors more. So if I just uh, rotate the sky a bit. I can change this to the color, exactly the color that I want. And for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Now, I would like this laptop to be black. And uh, if I click on this, I can see, I go in this model mode, I click on this, I can see that this is the, this is the material that's used. And I want to make this part of the laptop uh, black. And this is the black color that I would like to use. And there's a little trick you can use if you have a material that you want to be replaced with another material. And you have to select this material, or maybe you even you, you even don't. Yeah, you don't have to select it. If you know that this is a material you want to be replaced, you just take this, you drag it, hold down Alt. Well, uh, and when this frame appears, you just release. And this material will be replaced by the one that you wanted it to be replaced uh, with. So yeah, I hope I said that sentence correct. And I think I will be. I want. I want this to be replaced, and also this. And I think these are. Yeah, this one and this one. The black. Uh, so I will do the same thing for this and the same thing for this. And now, if I render this, I can see that this black uh, screen. For my eyes, it looks better on this sky than the white was looking. So the last thing I want to do is to create some animations with this laptop. And that's actually very, very, very easy in Cinema 4D. So let's say I want this laptop to come up and open up as, in, as, in, as it enters the screen, so it opens up. So all I have to do is just make a keyframe for this Y axis and uh, go like forward 20 frames, make another keyframe here, I pressed Z, 
uh, which is uh, my shortcut for the... I don't know if it's, if, if it's the default shortcut, but maybe I changed it. I don't know. Well, if you have a different shortcut here, then you know that um, you have different than I changed mine. So now, if I go back to frame zero, and actually I'm gonna enab uh, enable this so that when I make any changes, it all automatically records it. So now if I uh, move this laptop down, you can see that it kind of flies in. And actually, I will just change this so it's kind of faster. Maybe 10? Yeah, I think 12. Okay, 12 will be enough. And now if I want the screen to be closed when it comes in and open when it comes up, the screen will open. Now I just have to take this, um, select this lid object. And I think that this, uh, yeah, this is the rotation that closes the lid. Now I am gonna, let's say I want at this moment, I will, uh, I want the lid to be closed at this moment. And then at around 20, it will, I want this to be fully open. So now I will go back to this uh, frame number nine and change this to, I think, to zero. Yeah, to zero, just to completely to zero. And now, as you can see, the laptop comes up and it opens up. So maybe I can even add this uh, a, a tiny uh, kind of a small rotation to this. So the animation looks a little more interesting. It's always it's always nice when there's more action going on. Of course, if you don't overdo it. So when it looks uh, when, when you overdo some animations, then it might look uh, worse. But in this case, I believe that it's going to be okay. Now this is the axis that I want to uh, the laptop to rotate. So I'm going to click here. And at this moment, I think I will make uh, click another one. And now let me just drag this like this. So this might be too fast. This might actually be too fast. So I think I overdid this at this moment. So let me just go back and rotate this back. Yeah, this is gonna be nice. And maybe you can even add, now I will open up this timeline because it gets uh, uh, too complicated for me to just look on this, this little timeline. So now I will open this up so now I can better see what's going on here. Now the laptop comes up, it rotates here, and let's say I want to have a, a little bit of overshoot here. And if I overshoot the rotation, so it kind of rotates and comes back. Uh, I think I have to go in this keyframe. Now, which one is the keyframe that I wanted? Yeah, this is the one. This is the H one. So H, are these the same? Yeah, this is uh, redundant. So I delete this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add here a mo one more keyframe. And this one is gonna, I will change this to uh, some more degrees. Now when it comes up, it kind of overshoots the rotation and comes back. And maybe this is too much. There's, um, for these overshoots, it looks good uh, when it's kind of a tiny motion here. Not a tiny, yeah, it, it's, it's not too much. Because in, in real life, nothing is ever like uh, very stationary or static, like um, like linear, linear. It always, all of the actions in real life, they always uh, overshoot or when you move your hand, it's not so linear. It's always, uh, it moves in, it has these little overshoots and um, these curves, this cur cur curvy motion. So it looks more natural if you do, the, do it this way. So next I would like this uh, laptop screen to move closer to the camera. So I'm gonna take this, uh, select this laptop object and I'm gonna make a key, there's already keyframes there. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna just move this closer to the screen and I'm gonna use this uh, green rectangle to know which part will be visible in this case the, in the Facebook cover. 
So now I can just uh, adjust these values here so that the screen uh, comes closer to my screen. And now if I look at this animation, yeah, you can see that it comes, maybe I will just uh, make it a little faster, a little faster. Yeah, this is good. Now, if you want your texture to change the, if you want your texture to start playing at a different time, for example, when it opens up, if you want uh, there to be a particular moment in the video, when it opens up here, you can go in your texture and you can change, if I believe you have to go in, if I believe correctly, you have to go in this animation, uh, change this to range. And now I think if you change this, let's say you go in this frame and you want uh, the video, in this case, I want the, the pictures all to already be here. So I will have to change this to something like 24. And as you can see, these pictures are already here. And now you can just, you can adjust it uh, this way. So now for the final animation, I just want this laptop to close back again and just fly out of the screen and maybe make some text appear here. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna open up this timeline again and I'm gonna change this, uh, these values of this uh, position here for the laptop. Um, for example, I want to do this at frame 80. Now I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to duplicate this. And now, as you can see, no, nothing's happening. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe let's try it again. Yeah. Mm, so it goes back. And at this moment, maybe I want this lid to close back again. So I'm going to press this. I'm going to go forwards and I'm going to close the lid. And yeah, I'm going to uh, type in zero and click this this keyframe. Now it closes, it closes. And at this moment, maybe it can start already start uh, going out of the screen, flying out of the screen. No, not the lid. I don't need to add uh, keyframes to the lid. I need to add keyframes to this laptop object. So at this moment, I will add some keyframes here. And then let's say at frame 115, this will fly out of the screen. Now, like this. And maybe it can start flying out even as the lid is closing. Because I think it's going to look better if it happens this way. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Maybe this is better. And maybe it can happen even faster. So now, if I add some text here, I can write uh, in some text. And I can move this to the center. I can change the height of this text. Yeah, I'm gonna place it here. And now, as the I want this text to appear as the laptop goes goes by. So I am gonna create this plane effector, and I'm gonna go in here, disable the position, enable scale, enable uniform scale, and right here minus one. And now if for this, while the plane effector is selected, I will create this linear field. And this field will control the animation of the text. And if this field is on this side, the text is not visible. But if this field moves by, you can see that the text is appearing. So all I have to do now is to just animate this uh, linear field in the same way uh, that the laptop is moving out of the screen. So I'm going to go in this coordinates, I'm going to um, press actually this button. And as the laptop moves away, I'm going to move this linear field in very, very similar, similar way, somewhere here. So let's just see how that looks. Goes to the screen. Yeah. So yeah, that's how easy it was. If you have any questions, uh, uh, ask them in the comments. And again, if you want it, uh, if you want a tutorial how I made these, uh, these, how I set this up for a Facebook page cover video, you can watch the tutorial, which is in the description. The link is in the description. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.